Now, this is what I want you to do. For all those who are not subscribers to the shock of the hour, I need you to email me at priestisaac 27 at gmail.com because for a limited time only, I will be offering, listen to this, two free weeks of the shock of the hour. So if you're not a subscriber to the shock, of course you've listened to the shock, but if you're not receiving the shock of the hour every evening in your inbox via the email, then you need to contact me and say, Priest Isaac, I would like to get the two week subscription that is the free subscription for the shock of the hour. And we will send you, email you each and every evening after the shock of the hour, that episode specifically that was recorded. Remember, the shock of the hour is a program that comes to you every evening. I'm talking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And of course, as I said, after the program, you get the recording of the program in your inbox, in your email the next day. That is the shock of the hour. And of course, it is a monthly subscription of only $50 United States currency. But I am offering you for a limited time, two weeks subscription, free of course, for the shock of the hour. And of course, after the two strongs or two weeks as they call it is expired, it is up to you if you'd like to continue with the shock of the hour subscription. So to get two whole strongs, two whole weeks specifically as they call it, of the shock of the hour free, no charge whatsoever, and you can full joy the nightly program that you ain't gonna hear on YouTube and you're not gonna get on Facebook, just definitely contact us, Priest Isaac, P-R-I-E-S-T-I-S-A-A-C, 27 at gmail.com. Blessed love. to make a judgment based on all available information. Tonight, we investigate the most extraordinary event of the 20th century. Man landing on the moon. But believe it or not, some people say it never happened. This whole thing was a fake. Decide for yourself as we explore the evidence. The angle has landed. Analyze official government photos. What a ride, what a ride. Examine the films. The flag flaps on the moon where there's no atmosphere. And hear the testimony of one former astronaut who's not afraid to speak his mind. NASA could have covered it up. Could the government have orchestrated the deception of the century? NASA could have pulled off the greatest hoax of all time. You be the judge on conspiracy theory. Did we land on the moon? Yeah. Who give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life? Kadamar, we're highly celestial first. Welcome you to another edition of the Shock of the Hour, the Honorable Priest Isaac here with you on a wonderful looking evening. You're definitely in the tiger's nest and of course just reaching out to one and all and you have already heard what it is. We're in the midst of our summer solstice, eh? Summer solstice experience. We definitely will be having our wonderful hike this Sunday. And that is the 23rd day of June, this Sunday, the 23rd day of June, the summer solstice, national summer solstice hike 
21st of June morning hike. And of course, I'm saying, you know, give thanks to all the international guests that are with us, you know, and all our, you know, those that uh, will be coming in from different parts of the world to join us on Sunday. Yeah, man, we'll be having a packed audience going up to Green Castle Hill. Must say we're thankful to the Most High for such blessings, you know. We'll have ones from the United States, ones from the Caribbean Islands, individuals coming in from the Virgin Islands. Uh, we'll be having people there from Texas, Arizona, from England. This is how grand it's going to be. Government officials, different officials will be there to join us. So right now it's a lot of work. I'm telling you that we are doing, you know, preparing for the massive event on Sunday as we hike up to Green Castle Hill. You know, it's not too late, definitely. As I said, it's Sunday, the 23rd, the international hike. And remember, we're doing this every solstice and every equinox. So for those who did not get a chance to come and join us, remember, we're talking about September coming, the fall equinox. Now is the time for you to put yourself together and prepare for the fall equinox and come to Anu Antigua. To experience what it is you've been hearing me speak about all the time. Rastafari experience Antigua. Green Castle Hill. You know what I mean? Yeah, the marijuana, the tree of life. It's a different ball game around here. So do give thanks for your presence with us. And give thanks for the love. And give thanks for the joy. And, and as I said, looking forward for you to, to seeing those of you who didn't really get around to it. Those of you in St. Kitts, man, it's just in St. Kitts. Those of you in Barbados, man, it's just down the hill, man, what's wrong? Those of you in St. Lucia and Martinique, you know. Those of you in the USA, I know how it is, but it's worth it, man. Just come and spend some time with the Honorable Priest Isaac. And this is set in such a way because, you know, as you know, we are still even collaborating with the tourism department. So this is set in such a way that if... If, if it's up to you and you want to be on the high end, you can be on the high end, it ain't no problem. Or if you want to even stay, you know, um, uh, whatever, uh, you know, accommodations is best to your budget, all of that is well a part of the package, so it's all up to you. But we'll be looking forward for you to join us next, next time around if you're not joining us this time around. Yeah, of course, the experience the Green Castle Hill. Just contact us and... And get a more get some more detail on how we're doing it for September so you can book your flight. Now, as you heard at the beginning, hmm, did we really land on the moon? And I always believe that this documentary, now of course, you know, it has a lot of music in the background and all of that, but let's just bear with it. This documentary, this this was done several years ago several years ago or more than a decade maybe two decades or 15 years at least ago a fox documentary here and to me once you can take this documentary in properly especially when you view it it's a it's a it's a fox television documentary but this isn't tv here this is the shock of the hour you know but the point is that if you could really absorb this documentary here and you have a real open mind and an honest heart, it is impossible for you to walk away from this believing that in 1967 they went on any move. This document, documentary is... I mean, the information is hands down. You can't come and try nothing. For how clear it is that that whole moon landing stuff was a hoax. In fact, this same documentary provides enough evidence to show that the other moon, the other Apollo missions were fake as well. Because, you know, some people tend to say, well, they don't believe they went to the moon the first time. And I always said that too. I said the first time for sure. Not that I believe the other times, you know. But the first time, the evidence was overwhelming. But the evidence is overwhelming in the other times as well. 
and when you can prove that they never went to no moon, you want to know so how far they really go. Because they never go no moon, you know. But yet still they send Cassini to Saturn. And they send um uh, what it is? They send this other one, Galileo or some other thing and some other machine. They send to some other satellite, some other probe, the rover to Mars. The rover and Mars is running up and down on Mars and driving and taking pictures of Mars. You know, some other thing they send to Pluto. The, the names are just escaping me for the moment, but I should know these names off my head. But the point is, they've sent a lot of machines out there taking pictures from Uranus and taking pictures from Neptune, like a tourist saying, oh, I'm passing Saturn now, click, click. Take a look at the rings. I'm on my way to Neptune. And what I'm saying, according to what we've been taught, eh, the distance between the Earth and the Moon alone is so far. The distance between the Earth and the Sun is so far. To point to the point, if you get a, let's say, a, um, a tennis ball, and you have the tennis ball as a Sun or as the Sun, and then you get some marbles, and the marbles would be, let's just say, you know, the, the ratio as it relates to the ball as the sun to the planets. So you would have Mercury and Venus and Earth, depending on the size of marbles. Obviously, the marble for Earth and the marble for Venus would be similar. The marble for Jupiter would be the biggest. The marble for Pluto would be the smallest, you know. Do you know, taking in consideration the ratio of the size of the ball, the tennis ball, it might be a bigger ball, um, um, maybe a, a, a soccer ball, football, or maybe a basketball because the sun is really large. Do you know the distance from the sun to, let's just say, Mercury, and the distance from Mercury to Venus, and the distance from Venus to the Earth, maybe something like a mile in between each other? A mile in, you may say, when you say a mile, what you mean? A mile on, on the Earth level. Meaning that the planets are much further away from each other than you really think. I mean, the distance that you may get in science, I'm not saying that the distance is wrong, because there's obviously approximation there. But the point I'm making is that that distance is much further than you're really imagining. So when you can take the two marbles and, and maybe half a mile down the road, there's a distance between Saturn and Jupiter, or even Earth and Mars, like half a mile, even if it's quarter mile. That is very far for two marbles, one representing Earth and one representing Mars. The point I'm making is that in reality, the solar system and these planets that we have as our neighbors are so far in between each other that it ain't funny. So when we are saying that we are sending this and we are sending that and this satellite, not satellite necessarily, but this um, spacecraft going through the solar system and some of the spacecrafts in some of them, you send them to the sun first and they go around the sun and the gravitational pull and the, the swing from the sun, the, 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 gra the gravitational atmosphere of the sun pushes the craft out into space on its way to Jupiter, on its way to Saturn, on its way to Pluto. 13 years going through space on its way to Pluto. Taking some pictures and sending it back. Technology is something else. But how much is, of this is the truth? It's not that technology can't do it. Don't get me wrong. But what is the truth? Because they told us they went to the moon. And that's definitely false. So what is the truth? On July 16th, 1969, America held its breath. 69, 1967. 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 
space, beginning his 250,000 mile journey to the moon. During their eight day voyage, the Apollo 11 astronauts saw spectacular views of the Earth, floated in a weightless environment, and supposedly went where no man had gone before. It's looking good down a half. Ice on. Pick up some dust. Four forward, drift into the right little. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. But did it? Did they really land on the moon? Most of us think so. Millions of people watched on television as the lunar lander touched down, and these unforgettable words were spoken. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But even today, there are those who claim that believing in man's one small step requires one giant leap of faith. Bill Casing was an analyst and engineer at Rocketdyne, the company that designed the Apollo rockets. Now, before we even go any further, you see, we can talk, eh? They never went to the moon. They never did that. Vaccines are dangerous. What else we like to say? 9-11 is a fake. Okay, good. We can talk. But do we have evidence? Okay, we have evidence, all right. But where's the source? Listen to what this man said. I have leap of faith. Bill Casing. Bill Casing. You have to keep your notes. If you're serious about information, you don't just come and gaff, you know. You gotta be like a, sh a sharp razor sword. Bill Casing, you can call a name. You don't just talk. So you tell your children, even your own children, that have to go through some of the school systems that are set up in the different parts of the world, because some of them set up in some real weird ways, you know, man. They'll come and lock you up. <laughs> you got to teach them to, to be strong and say, well, yeah. So they say, who's the first man that ever went on the moon? Raise your hand, kids. I say, well, all right, you. Well, first of all, teacher, I'm not a kid, but nobody ever really went on the moon, you know. But the answer to the question you asking is, is Neil Armstrong, but nobody really went. Well, you're right, it's Neil, but what do you mean nobody ever went? Well, who, who told you that? Well, Bill Casing, because now you start to call a name. You see, your, ch your child's supposed to be sharp like that. Well, Bill Casing, so everybody go, what? Was an analyst and engineer at Rocketdyne. Was an analyst. Oh. And an engineer at Rocket died. Oh. The company that designed the Apollo rockets. The company that designed the same rockets that supposedly carried people to space. And he said, There were many problems that, that evolved during the 60s that led people to believe that we were never going to make it to the moon. Three decades ago, when the world watched Apollo's lunar landings, Bill Casing was watching too. But what he saw on television, combined with his experiences at Rocketdyne, made him a skeptic. The whole thing then seemed phony to me. I think it was an intuitive feeling that what was being shown was not real. This is the same engineer from the same company that make the rocket here. this is not the this is not a taxi driver this is not the president of the united this is one of the key engineers at the same company that made the same rocket that went to the moon and he and he has a prominent part in this documentary and he's telling you the whole thing looked phony to him he's telling you the rockets that they had there's no way that they could ever make it to no moon. He's saying so, the engineer. That's the 
As he studied the footage more closely, he was shocked to find several inconsistencies. Casing observed that despite the clarity of deep space, the stars were missing from the black lunar sky. So he observed that the stars were missing from the black lunar sky. Now, you don't have to be an engineer to see all of this. But, but keeping him now in his lane, getting back to the other point, that's serious to me. That point alone shut down the whole thing. He's saying that them rockets could, could never ever meet that far, reach that far. Remember, it was a space race going on, you know, they even call it that Star Wars space race with them and Russia. And Russia. Because when Russia launched Sputnik, they was like, what? We got to do something, sending dog and monkey into space. No, nah, man, we got to send people into space. In fact, we're going to the moon as if that was some easy thing to do. He saw the American flag waving, even though there is no air on the moon. And that's another thing. The, the moon ain't got no atmosphere. We have been taught. So there's no wind on the moon. So they say. So if there's no wind on the moon, how is it that the flag flapping in the wind, not just moving or flapping in the wind, like if you have two big fans to the side of it, flapping in the wind. The moon ain't got no atmosphere. <laughs> He discovered that there was no blast crater beneath the lunar lander where its powerful rocket engine had fired. This evidence convinced Casing that we never sent a man to the moon. No blast crater. That's serious, you know. You see when a rocket taking off from the planet. <laughs> Nobody can be nowhere close that, you know. And you see the exhaust coming out and the blast and you see the rocket you know, lift off and it taking its time and then it speeds up just to get away from the planet to get out of the atmosphere you understand the rocket the kind of boost that's needed and then now landed on the moon remember this is no jokey little thing how they have it like it's a cartoon you know landing on the moon you need now similar um, um, level of you know of, of energy and of, of exhaust and, and combustion and whatever so coming down the blast you need to balance you coming down now not the exact rocket but now the spacecraft the moon craft the the, the the level of boost and exhaust you need to balance you coming down would be enormous and then the the level of boost that you're going to need to, to ship you up would be enormous again to return to that spaceship that was going to fly back down to Earth and land like a regular plane. A plane flying out of the space coming in. You understand? Serious vibes. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow. Yeah. The point is, that is supposed to leave a crater like the size of any crater on the moon it didn't not only didn't it leave the crater even the the foot the footprints they said the footprints the famous footprint in the in this in the moon still there remember the moon's dust is like dry sand so it's easy to make a footprint the boot print for the moonwalkers is is there after the crater after the the the, the ship part of me take off and dust kicking up and that, that footprint still there, right in the same spot. When they came out of the, the spacecraft on the moon, you know. So a lot of things not making no sense whatsoever. But NASA dismisses these charges. Of course. There are always going to be people who believe uh, some outlandish theories and the notion that we, that we somehow were able to fake the lunar missions is pretty outlandish. Now that's Brian Welch. And he's he's a spokesperson for NASA. So what what was it? What facts did he just drop there? I don't even want to repeat what he said. You know what I mean? But he but within what he said, there was no facts. There was nothing to say. Well, yeah, Bill Casey said this, that, and the third. But let me show you. If you observe this, that, and the other, nothing. All he said is that some people, you know, what I mean, there are always going to be people that have outlandish statements. And this is just a, a political person to speak. 
This is just a spokesperson. He just speak what they said to speak. Bill Casey came with facts. Look, there's no star in the background. Why is it that the flag flapping in the wind? We're dealing with science here. Hmm? You know, where's the blast crater? If the sun is the only light, how is it that you have three shadows for uh, for everything? As if it was filmed in a studio. Anyway, we don't reach there yet. As outlandish as it might seem, it has been estimated that as many as 20% of Americans believe we never went to the moon. But how could anyone think that one of the greatest moments in human history is a hoax? Is it really possible that NASA deceived the world? According to a former astronaut, it's entirely possible. Regarding the Apollo mission, I can't say 100% for sure whether these men walked on the moon. Brian O'Leary was a NASA astronaut in the 1960s. No, he's a NASA astronaut in the 1960s. What kind of statement that he can't say for sure that the men did walk on the moon? You can't say for sure. Who are you talking about? Why have any doubt? He served as a science advisor during the Apollo moon missions. Exactly. It's possible that NASA could have covered it up uh, just in order to cut corners and to be the first to allegedly go to the moon. Okay, it's possible that NASA could have covered it up. But why would they do a thing like that, even if it was possible, even if they had the ability to? And why would you even think that? Like, like wow, what, what kind of thinking is that? He walking, you see them kind of talk, he sound like he's sitting on the fence. I mean, it's possible. The fact that it's possible and you even coming on national television talking like, boy, that man could have do that for you, know, that man, you know what I mean? Boy, I'm not even too sure if they really went. That means there's something he knows, something that he he see, he saw and, and maybe still seeing that, you know, that, oh, I don't believe they ever went. But he, not, he don't want to really come out and say Man, them is dangerous games. Pick a side. Bill Casey, pick a side. You should pick a side. Was getting to the moon first so important that our government would consider faking it? To find the answer, we have to go back 40 years to a time when America and the Soviets were locked in a struggle for world domination. People assumed that the nation that won the space race would win the Cold War. We defined that as being first to the moon. It was a time of more or less national hysteria. On October 4th, 1957, the Soviets terrified America when they sent Sputnik, the world's first satellite, into orbit. The New York Times had to publish an article explaining to Americans that it did not carry nuclear bombs that could be dropped on the city from that altitude. The American public's fear of nuclear annihilation intensified as Russia took the lead in the space race. House we announced in, in Congress that we may be headed for extinction. Many feared that the Soviet Union's ultimate goal was to put a missile base on the moon. Meanwhile, America's space program was having difficulty even getting off the ground. The chances of getting to the moon and returning safely to Earth were something like 0.0017%. Okay, hear that? 0.0017%. Zero, 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 That's Bill Casey, the engineer that work on the rocket. Oh. Not a barber. The engineer that work. Oh, don't feel no way. I have to drive home the point, man. We might go to sleep on this. 0. 0. 0. 0.0014 or something like that percent. Three zeros after the point before you even get a digit with a so-called value. That's the chance that we had of sending one of them rockets that he work on to the moon. In other words, virtually an impossibility. No stars in the background. What actually happened in my mind... What actually happened in his mind... Is that during the 60s, <laughs> they said, if you can't make it, fake it. But if the Apollo missions were fake, how was this monumental hoax accomplished? According to Casey, 
The launch of Apollo's Saturn V rocket was real. It just never sent astronauts to the moon. The astronauts were launched with the Saturn V. Then, in order to account for their disappearance, they simply orbited the Earth for eight days. And in the interim, they showed these fake pictures of the astronauts on the moon. But on the eighth day, the command capsule separated from the vehicle and descended to Earth, as, of course, was shown in films. This theory inspired the 1978 movie Capricorn One in which the government attempts to fool the world by faking a mission to Mars. Now here, a mission to Mars now, fake. The government faking a mission to Mars. That's a movie, Capricorn. Capricorn 1, yeah. 1978, faking a mission to Mars. This theory inspired this movie. We do not claim this planet in the name of America. We claim it in the name of all the people of the planet Earth. Apollo footage is strikingly similar to the scenes in Capricorn 1. So the Apollo... <laughs> wow. The Apollo footage is quite similar to that of the scenes in Capricorn 1. Producer Paul Lazarus suggests that the film's plotline could be more fact than fiction. I believe, had they wanted to, that NASA could indeed have pulled off the greatest hoax of all time, never sent anyone to the moon, and recreated it in a television studio. And I believe it could have been done at that time. The technology was in place. The footing is solid. The surface seems powdery. The surface is fine and powdery. I can pick it up loosely with my toe. What we put up on the screen was our own simulated version of whatever we could do within a four million eight budget. But with NASA's forty billion dollar budget, Casing believes they had the resources to pull off a hoax if they couldn't make it to the moon. So, so Lazarus was saying that when they made Capricorn One, they had a four million dollar budget, but but NASA has a forty billion dollar budget. You know what I mean? So they could have done a thing too. The reason I believe that uh, NASA and the government faked the moon landing was basically it was technically impossible to do it. And they simply had to come up with some sort of alternative that they felt the public would believe. Casing theorizes that the lunar landings were actually filmed in Nevada's high desert. Yeah. At the top secret military base known as Area 51. Area 51. Now tell me. Area 51 is one of the most heavily guarded facilities in the United States. If you went in and tried to get some information, you could be shot and killed without any warning. Russian spy satellite photos of Area 51 reveal not only a series of hangars that resemble movie sound stages but also barren moon-like areas, which coincidentally are covered with craters. Compare this photo of a lunar crater allegedly taken from the moon's orbit by Apollo 10 with this satellite photo of a crater at Area 51. No, no, of course, as I said, this is actually a video, but the crater at that Area 51 looks exactly like the crater at the, um, the taken by the Apollo um, craft. Apollo 10. Even astronauts acknowledge the similarity of the terrain. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's uh, like much of the high desert. Of it, it, it has a stark beauty all of its own. It's like much like the 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 the, 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 the deserts of the United States. That's what the the the, the astronaut is saying on the moon. Uh, United States. Could billions of people really have been fooled into thinking the Nevada desert was the moon? Casing believes it's possible. And maybe the real reason Area 51 is so heavily guarded. This is a very secret base 
And with good reason, because undoubtedly the moon sets are still there. And if they are, no one's getting a look at them anytime soon. So you see how serious the thing is. Now, what I'm saying here, I mean, it's so much more, you know, but, but because it's a video too. But what, what I'm saying here, just listen to it, brother, for a moment. I always like to use these examples because you should go and watch the video. The video go deep into how they, they take crisp and clear pictures on the moon. One light on the moon is, is from the sun, but yet still in the shadow of... of, of in your shadow, you still have a bright picture of your face. Man, the thing is serious. Passing through the Van Allen's belt alone is a mystery. And at that time, they didn't have a good understanding of how dangerous the radiation of the Van Allen's belt is. Even the astronauts saying, man, just to do an x-ray, they have to put you in the lead thing. But yet still, we pass through the Van, uh, the Van Allen's belt, which is miles upon miles of terrible radiation. No x-ray can compare to the Van Allen's belt. And yet still they came out unscathed. Even the pictures that they took should not even have uh, uh, passed through the, ba the Van Allen's belt shield of, uh, or area of radiation. But what I'm trying to say is that it is things like these, man, that make me look at how serious this planet is. When people can go to this level just to, to push their agenda, that's why they take people out the way, to push their agenda. Then people will, will poison you at a banquet just to push their agenda. And when you talk about what they're doing, they know how to deal with you to push their agenda. They teach us that Bill Armstrong or Neil Armstrong and Buzz Lightyear and all of them, the first set of people to step foot. Oh, the eagle has landed. One small step for this and one grand step for the next set of people. With nothing at all, Gossa, nobody went on no moon. And the other players in the game, you know, the people that they run in the race with, they do nothing gossip to. But for some reason, I never hear them say anything about it. The Japan, the China, and the Russia, even in that time during the Cold War, when they said they put a man on the moon, maybe Russia was saying at the time, we don't have sufficient proof to show that it is not true. But we strongly believe that it is a fake. But I know by now, and even at that time, they had to have had some idea at that time, but now it's, I mean, it's clear. But at that time, they had to have had some idea while it was happening, I mean, you know, while the rockets were going up, while they said Houston, the Eagle has land landed. I know for sure other governments of the world were saying, is this real? This is impossible. You know how tricky the U.S. is. Because they have that level of governance too. And then there's another level that you don't know at, at, about at all. And I don't even think it, it concerns the presidents. It concerns the real rulers that you never see or hear about. And they're all one for sure. They're all one. Even behind the cameras, the, the leaders of the countries are one, much less behind the curtains. Wow. So what's going on? 9-11. What's going on? You know, Hurricane Katrina. These killers make up storms, man. And... and influence the, 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 the crust of the earth and make earthquakes and kill hundreds of thousands just f for their own you know, their own achievement their own benefits lying about going to the moon 
Lying about going to the moon, man. Up next. Tranquility Base here. If the lunar module landed with 10,000 pounds of thrust, why is there no blast crater? Plus, was this footprint really made on the moon? And later, 10 astronauts die under strange circumstances. How far could the conspiracy reach? 10 astronauts died, I think, in 14 years. 10 astronauts died in 14 years. All under, no old people, all under strange circumstances. During that same time. Come on, man. As the spokesperson said, how can you keep, how can so many people keep a secret? You kill those who don't want to keep the secret. Find out when Conspiracy Theory returns. led to believe that on July 20th, 1969, the Lunar Excursion Module, also known as the LEM, carried American astronauts to the surface of the moon. But could it have simply been a prop lowered by wires onto a movie set? Now hear that. Or could it be simply a prop lowered by wires onto a movie set? This is the, 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 the Lunar Module that landed. Bill Casey says that this may explain the absence of engine noise in the official NASA footage. Wait. The noise saying? level of a rocket engine is up into the 140-150 decibel range. 140-150 decibel range. In other words, enormously loud. How would it be possible to hear astronauts' voices against the background of a running rocket engine? You understand what he said? Remember again, you know, this is not a person sitting down saying, Hey, you know what I was wondering? Now, if this, if this engine coming down with tens of thousands of blasts of, of, of you know, energy, you know, to land tens of thousands of pound blasts to land this module, how is it you could hear, not only hear the astronauts clearly, but you hear no noise? This is a person that work on the same craft, that know how much noise it's supposed to make. And yet still the thing landing like a glider. And people talking, yes, yes, turn to the right, turn to the left. Houston, the eagle is landed. Wow, how would it be possible to hear astronauts' voices against the background of a running rocket engine. Waking up some dust. Three feet, two and a half down. Face shadow. Four forward, drift into the right a little. Mm -hmm. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Is this evidence that the footage is actually fake? A sequence shot in a controlled environment here on Earth? Just months before this historic landing, a prototype LEM was flight tested at Ellington Air Force Base. No, so here it is now. Just and this is why you need to watch the video you now. Just months before this miraculous moon landing, a prototype was tested. Tested with the same Bill uh, Neil Armstrong. He almost died. He parachuted out of it. This is right on Earth now. They tested. They were testing the same stuff that landed on the moon. They were testing it like a few months just before they went out. Remember, they went out at like, like, like they had to run out, you know, because they said, no, man, we had to be first. So it was like in a rush. So they were testing the same moon lander months before, and it was just continually crashing. According to what the engineers say, that's why he said it was impossible because they were in such a rush. They didn't even develop this stuff to the point that you could say, okay, well, we finally have it. Remember, it is out into space you're going, you know, this is life and death. You don't want not even an inch of a mistake. So this this moon lander would have to be perfect and prove it prove itself perfect several hundred times before we say, okay, yeah, let's ship it out. This project would have needed at least the next proper ten years to be to meet this perfection. While NASA cameras record the test flight, Neil Armstrong struggles to control the unwieldy craft. Then 
approximately 300 feet. The lander flies wildly out of control. At the last second, Armstrong ejects. And floats to safety. If the lander was so unstable and difficult to fly in the controlled environment of Earth, if the lander was so unstable and difficult to fly in the controlled environment of Earth. Then how did the limb land six times flawlessly in the alien environment of the moon? So how could it land six times more flawlessly in the alien environment of the moon? The limb had a single engine mounted dead center, and then they had little, little push jets, thruster jets, couple of them up on top this was supposed to control their attitude as they came down well i'll tell you a secret the instant you moved your tail in that cabin an inch you would change the load pattern it would begin to tilt and it would start that thing spinning the arguments that have been arrayed um, on the side of those who believe that the lunar landings were a hoax are very elaborate and they have to be to support um, a, a theory like this. In the end, there's, there's one set of evidence that is irrefutable and that is that there are footprints, boot prints, still on the lunar surface. But conspiracy theorists say that the footprints themselves are suspicious. Serpent appears to be very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. To have a powerful rocket engine blast the surface of the moon, blasting away all of the dust, and then find footprints surrounding the lunar lander, exactly. that to me would be an impossibility. Exactly. Photo after photo reveals that the lunar surface surrounding the limb is covered with footprints. But Casing says there's something even more difficult to explain. It is. The fact that there's no blast crater under the limb is one of the most conclusive pieces of evidence that I find supporting the hoax. In fact, no sign of a blast crater is visible for any of the six lunar landings. But limb specialist Paul Fiel says he can explain why the lunar module left no crater when landing on the moon. The amount of thrust that you need coming out of the bottom of the descent engine is about 1,500, 2,000 pounds of thrust. And all that does is just push dust away. There's no burning or anything like that. Yet NASA's own scientific illustrations clearly depict a blast crater. Yeah. Then there's one other point. If they had truly landed on the moon, this dust would have then descended on the lunar lander, on the foot pads, and we find not a trace of dust on the foot pads. When I discovered that alone, <laughs> I said, no way am I looking at a lunar lander that landed on the moon. Now, as I said, this is coming from those who are the professionals. Now, you see, again, one of the, the moral of the story is you've got to be careful with information. It's not just about debate, debating and de you know having a conversation and just you know, talking. It's about understanding the real situation of life. A lot of people that advocate for the flat earth, this is one of the main points that they use. And I would always tell people, people would literally come to me and say, but NASA lied, NASA never went to the moon. I knew that. But I, that don't mean the world is flat or the earth is flat. That, them lying about going to the moon doesn't mean the earth is flat. That's for sure. But it's obvious that they never went to the moon. Killing astronauts who are speaking out, they'll kill you for speaking out as an astronaut. Six, uh, not six, 12 died in 14 years under suspicious circumstances. Now tell me. And there are many other things, you know, many of the pictures, they have something that they call the hair cross that you would see over the pictures. In many of the pictures, you see items in the pictures like the, the, the moon rover that they drove in and even some the, the flag over the, the cross here pixel on the, the, the photo. 
those who are into photography will know exactly what I'm talking about. That as if it was cut and paste. Impossible for the cross here to be behind a picture. It should be over the whole picture. And that was seen to have many of those pictures from the moon. So this is something not only to look into, you could definitely cross this out as a you know, as 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 truth. This is definitely one of the lies that has been told to us. And give thanks, you know, because that's what the shock of the hour is all about. And let me just remind you too, even before you go, remember for those who are not subscribers to the shock of the hour nightly program, remember we're having a two strong or two weeks um, free shock of the hour for you, for those who are first time, you know, shock of the hour subscribers. In fact, in fact, no, I get it. Let me get it. I don't want to mix it up. You don't have to be a Shock of the Hour subscriber. What I'm saying, you could sign up for two weeks free of the Shock of the Hour. So all you have to do is email me, priestisaac27 at gmail.com and say I'm interested in getting the two weeks Shock of the Hour free. Because remember, the Shock of the Hour subscription is $50 per month. And you get the, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday edition of the Shock of the Hour. Every night you get the, uh, or, or every day after the program, you get the nightly recording. It comes straight to your inbox. You know, we email that to you, the Shock of the Hour. And remember, the Shock of the Hour is not a program that you definitely get otherwise on the internet, Facebook or YouTube. Definitely Facebook will be... You know, once in a while you may hear a shock of the hour on anything to do with Facebook. And a um, few of the shock of the hours will definitely reach to YouTube, but the shock of the hour is just information, man. Unless you're a part of the shock of the hour subscription, you're not really a part of the university anymore. Maybe you're a part of the after class, but unless you are a part of the shock of the hour subscription team, you're not a part of the university. Take it from me. It ain't no problem if you don't want to be in this university. Maybe have another university. I ain't fighting for no enrollments. But I'm just showing you if you are not a part of the shock of the hour subscription team. I'm just making my point. You're not a part of the university. So, so you should subscribe to the shock of the hour. It's only $50 a month and you get the program every day. You know, similar to what you've just listened to here. But I'm showing you that we have a two weeks, um, two week subscription right now. Two weeks subscription, free for the shock of the hour, uh, free subscription for the shock of the hour for two weeks. So all you have to do is to contact us and say we'd like the two weeks free subscription, my brother, and you will get two weeks work at two strongs work of the shock of the hour. You know we prefer to say strong than weeks. The strong work of the shock of the hour subscription and after that after the two strongs or two weeks obviously we will contact you recontact you and tell you well that two weeks period has passed and if you desire to continue it is up to you if you do not desire to continue we may even give you an next strong just you know I mean and then leave you at that but it's up to you if you desire to continue as a subscriber of the shock of the hour so email us priest isaac 27 at gmail.com email us and let us know that you definitely would like to be a part of the shock of the hour uh two weeks free subscription so you can get some of the programs that you'll never hear on youtube on facebook or anywhere else yes i'm looking forward to that if you know your Bible and you do not know your history, the knowledge of your Bible will become a mystery. And in the case of what we spoke about a moment ago, it takes some real eyes to realize the real lies that are amongst us. Holy Emmanuel, I, Celestia, I, Ja, Rastafari, Salamta. Fifteen hundred years ago, also the climax, the real energy time. So this is why the, the Messiah of two thousand years ago is said to have been in the Pisces age. So during that age, 
on the 21st day of September, the sun would be in the Virgin constellation at that time, at the time of spring in the Southern Hemisphere. Now the sun in its movement in 30 days, 28 days, 27, 31, somewhere thereabouts, the sun will find itself in the midst of the next constellation that follows the Virgin. Remember the sun movement is very mystic because within that 28 to 31 day period, the sun is moving just a bit every single day before it reaches the other constellation. And you may say to yourself, what is he talking about? How on earth does the sun move from one constellation to the, I don't understand, I am confused. Again, episode one, can anyone remember the time frame in a solar day? It is 24 hours according to the clock that we use. But can you remember the time frame of a sidereal day, which is the day of the stars. The stars, the day of the stars, or a star day, or a sidereal day, is 23 hours and 56 minutes. So there is approximately a four minute difference every day between the rising of the sun and the rising of any star. That means the background, which is the stars, the background, which is the stars, in comparison to the sun, will change daily. Will change daily by four minutes. So it may not appear to be a great change daily but within a month's time the sun will be out of the constellation that it was in and gone into the other constellation that is exactly after it so again the 21st day of september the sun is lodged in the virgin constellation but on the 21st day of October, the sun will be in the Libra constellation. The sun will be in the scales within a month's time, moving slowly but surely from one constellation to the other. And then after that, on the 21st day of November, the sun would be lodged perfectly in the constellation that we call the Scorpion, the constellation of Scorpio. And then let us continue to follow the trend. For on the 21st day of December, the sun will be lodged perfectly in Sagittarius. We are talking about the Archer, a very key constellation. The constellation that has his bow and arrow pointed perfectly, not just at the scorpion, but have it pointed at the center of our galaxy. Yes, right in front of the archer is the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy that we are in, the black hole that is the generator for this galaxy is at the tip of the arrow of the archer in such vicinity at such a time. And this is why on the 21st day again of December 2012, there was this frenzy in the air about the Mayan calendar coming to an end, which it did according to its own prophecy. But yet still many do not understand what has taken place even from that time. Something did happen. I was, I mean, balancing even my own self at that time on the green Castle Hill, showing you now that the alignment was so important 
with the sun and the earth and the Milky Way galaxy that we are in. And that effect alone would cause a vibration and a frequency throughout our whole existence that would affect everyone but you would not be really aware of it unless you are you know in tune the sun will continue into january Now, this is what I want you to do. For all those who are not subscribers to the Shock of the Hour, I need you to email me at priestisaac 27 at gmail.com because for a limited time only, I will be offering, listen to this, two free weeks of the Shock of the Hour. So if you're not a subscriber to the Shock, of course you have listened to the Shock, but if you're not receiving the shock of the hour every evening in your inbox via the email then you need to contact me and say priest isaac i would like to get the two week subscription that is the free subscription for the shock of the hour and we will send you email you each and every evening after the shock of the hour that episode specifically that was recorded remember the shock of the hour is a program that comes to you every evening i'm talking about monday tuesday wednesday and thursday and of course as i said after the program you get the recording of the program in your inbox in your email the next day that is the shock of the hour and of course it is a monthly subscription of only 50 dollars united states currency but i am offering you for a limited time, two weeks subscription, free of course, for the shock of the hour. And of course, after the two strongs or two weeks, as they call it, is expired, it is up to you if you'd like to continue with the shock of the hour subscription. So, to get two whole strongs, two whole weeks specifically, as they call it, of the shock of the hour free, no charge whatsoever and you can full joy the nightly program that you ain't gonna hear on youtube and you're not gonna get on facebook just definitely contact us priest isaac p-r-i-e-s-t-i-s-a-a-c 27 at gmail.com blessed love